there, Michelle Short here for My Favourite Things. Today I have a new baby card to share with you using the Best Friends in the Galaxy set. So let's get started. This is the Best Friends in the Galaxy set. It's absolutely adorable. So there are all these pandas on the planets and in the galaxy. Some fun sentiments that you can use for lots of different occasions. I've stamped one of the images onto some smooth white cardstock using black ink and I'm colouring it with Copic markers. I am colouring the bear as if it is a panda. I wasn't 100% sure whether it definitely was a panda, it looked like it to me but sometimes with stamped images I'm never quite sure. But I am colouring it as if it was a panda because they've kind of got like these sort of patches around the eyes. So with pandas they have these dark patches around the eyes and black ears, black arms and legs and also a tail and then the rest of them is white. So I'm going in with my darkest shade which is N9 and just mapping out what I think are the darkest areas. These legs and arms are just absolutely tiny so I'm being careful there to try and not go over the lines. I'm then going to blend that out using the N7 and I'm trying not to add too much darkness to these eye patches because I want to be able to see the stamped lines underneath. I'm then going in with the N5 and blending that out further and I didn't actually use the N7 on the arms or the legs just because they're such tiny areas so I'm just going to blend that out with the N5. And I do go in and colour in the tail at this point as well. And then I can blend that out further with the N3. And it did take me a little while just to try and blend the N5 and the N3 together. It doesn't particularly look like a great blend on camera. In real life I think it was a lot better. So just colouring in the arms and the legs there or one arm and one leg because that's all you can see. And then for the white area I don't want to leave it completely white because they, it would kind of look a little bit flat if I did. So I'm going to start off by adding in some shadow with my darkest shade which is the N5. I didn't necessarily need to go this dark. I think I would have been okay with the N3 which is what I'm using now to blend that out. But I quite like having it you know quite a little bit darker than I necessarily think I would because sometimes when you add the lighter colours on top it does bleach it out a little bit. So I'm then going in with the N1 and bringing that colour up towards the top of his face. And I have got a little bit of a harsh line there on the edge like I said in real life it didn't quite look as harsh as it does on camera. And then I'm going in with the N0 which is very very light but I'm just going to then blend that out to white and then just use the colourless blender just to blend that edge. And then for the planet that he is laying on, I am colouring it as if it was the planet Earth. <laughs> Obviously planet Earth doesn't have a ring around it, but because my sentiment says welcome to the world little one, I kind of wanted it to look like it was the Earth. So I'm going in to start with with YG01 and I was just mapping out where I wanted the kind of land portions of this planet to be. I then went in with YG17, which was my darkest shade. I'm then blending it out with the YG23 and then back again with the YG01. And then for the ocean or the sea part, I'm starting off with my darkest shade which is B02 and I'm mainly just going around the edges with that. I can then blend it out with the B00. And then I can go in with the B quadruple zero. I was going to say triple zero, then it's quadruple zero. And I'm actually just going over pretty much the entire portion of this image here. Because I want some of the land to kind of blend into the sea a little bit, I don't want too harsh of a line. I'm just going over it with the, that B triple zero, um, quadruple zero, excuse me. And that's just going to fade it out a little bit so it's not so harsh. 
I'm then taking the best friends in the galaxy dynamics and I have placed that over the image, held it down with some low tack tape and run that through my die cutting machine. And I'm just popping up those little pieces there with a pokey tool. And isn't he just absolutely adorable? I've then taken the Polaroid shaker frame dynamics and I've cut that four times from some smooth white cardstock and I'm going to use both the inside portion and the outside portion but I only need one for the inside piece and I'm going to create like a galaxy background on this piece. So I'm starting off by adding some distress ink in peacock feathers towards the top. This area is so tiny that I'm not going to get a huge amount of colour in it. So I just decided to go with three main colours. So I started off with the peacock feathers here. I'm then going in with Mermaid Lagoon. And I'm using ink blending brushes here just so that I can try and get a fairly smooth blend. Galaxy backgrounds never honestly in my case, it never really looked that great. Once I add the kind of white splatter on top, I think it looks a lot better. So I'm going in here with Wilted Violet and I just added a little bit onto that left hand side as well. I'm then taking black soot and I'm going to cover the rest of the area with this. And I am blending over some of where I added the color as well. So I'm kind of just mapping that darkest area first, adding a little bit around the outside edges as well. And then I do go in with Blueprint Sketch. In hindsight, this didn't really do anything. My inks are really quite dry. Ordinarily with a galaxy background, I like to use kind of like a mid-tone or a darker blue. And it tends to blend the colours with the black. But in this case, it didn't really do a huge amount. It did add a little bit of blue to it, but not, not particularly a lot. So I am going back in with the black soot and just darkening up some of those black areas. And then the thing for me that's most important with galaxy backgrounds is to go back in with those colours. So I'm starting off again going in with the Wilted Violet to add that purple back in. And I apologise that my piece here keeps sliding around. I'm then going in with the Mermaid Lagoon. And then I lose a lot of the peacock feathers at the top and I do try and go back in and add it in. But like I said, my inks are a little bit dry, so I didn't get a huge amount there, but you can still see a little bit of colour. I then want to add some stars onto this. So I've got a little piece of nonstick sheet. I've added a small amount of water to that. And now I'm adding some Dr. PH Martin's white paint to it. And I want there to be some kind of bigger splats, kind of splatters, <laughs> and then some smaller splatters. So I started off with quite a bit on my brush to get some kind of larger drops of the paint. And then I'm trying to sort of dab a little bit off of the brush and then go back into it and then splatter some more. Obviously, the more I splatter on, there's going to be less on the brush. So I'm going to get smaller splat marks anyway. But I did then want to have like another larger one, sort of more on the right hand side. So I go back in and add that in afterwards. I'm then stamping a sentiment from the Best Friends in the Galaxy stamp set onto one of those Polaroid shaker frames. Stamp that down with some VersaFine Clair Black ink. And then now I've got those other frames that I cut, I'm adding some on point precision glue onto the frames and then I'm going to stack those up. So I'm stacking the three up that I cut just from the white cardstock and then I'm going to stack the other one on top that I added the sentiment onto. And I like using the liquid glue here just so that I can move the pieces around, try and line them up as best as possible. And then I can pop the one with the sentiment on the top. I've then cut a piece of white cardstock that I'm going to add onto the back. 
So I'm adding some more on point precision glue just around that opening there. And then I can pop that piece of cardstock on top. And that's just going to help it so that when I add the other piece back inside, it's going to be able to stick to that. And then I can still then add some adhesive onto the back of this piece to then add on to my card base. So I'm just adding some more of the glue inside that Polaroid frame and then I can pop that piece inside. I just found it easier to be able to add the ink blending onto this piece so that I could see exactly what was going to be showing. So I can just pop that inside and then I have stacked up my image another two times as well. I didn't really want to use foam tape for it. I wanted it to be flat on the actual Galaxy background but I still wanted it to have a little bit of dimension so I can just adhere that down with some more glue so just pop that in place and then I can press that down I then wanted to have it look like the kind of Polaroid was attached to the card with a little bit of washi tape and so I've got the tools of the trade dynamics and I'm cutting that from some black and white stripes 6x6 paper pad and that's just going to kind of look a little bit like washi tape it is a little bit small for the Polaroid frame but I could have kind of extended it out and just did some partial die cutting but actually I think it looked quite cute the size it was so I've added some adhesive onto the back of the Polaroid frame and I'm adhering that down onto an A2 size white card base so that's a finished size of four and a quarter inches by five and a half inches and then I'm popping that washi tape piece on top I did think about maybe adding two washi tapes kind of like in the corners there but I thought it looked quite cute at the top even though it is quite small so that is the card finished for today I think that panda is absolutely adorable and there's something a little bit different for a new baby card links to the products that I used will be listed in the description bar here on YouTube thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day